when we have a, a really, really good sermon that we like to go over the sermon we had and, and work it out. Uh, but given the holidays, it doesn't throw me off. Uh, because we don't want to, to miss transcendent moments where the Lord has spoken to us. We want to make sure that we know how to apply it. Um, I, I don't know about you guys, but how many times have you been in church, heard something really awesome, and then you don't know what to do with it? Uh, something I find to be very difficult is, apply, is applying the word of God to our lives. So uh, this Sabbath, I want to make sure that we, we, we make it known that we want to go over it. Uh, to let us know how to apply it, but we also accept the fact that it's it's the holiday season, and uh, everybody probably needs a, a really cool story we heard 50 million times from the New England, like, man, uh, 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 unless y'all don't want to. Okay, all right, um, so therefore, can we open our Bibles to Luke chapter 2? Luke chapter 2. Thank you, guys. Luke chapter 2. want to go to verse 8, Luke chapter 2, verse 8. We can stay seated today for the reading of God's word. Luke chapter 2, I want to go to verse 8. I want to read down to about verse 20, okay? Luke chapter 2, verse 8. Luke chapter 2, verse 8. The Bible reads from the New American Standard Bible this way. It says, in the same region, there were some shepherds. It doesn't say how many. It says there were some shepherds. Staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flocks by night. It says that an angel, verse 9, and an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Verse 12 says, this will be a sign for you that you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men, with whom he is well pleased. Verse 15 says, When the angels had gone away from their into away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem then. And see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph. And the baby, as he lay in the manger, and when they had seen this, they made known the statements which had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at these things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, yes. pondering them in her heart. And notice what the Bible says. It says, the shepherds went back glorifying God and praising God yes. for all they had heard and yes. seen just as it had been told to them. This morning, I'd like to preach from the sermon title, Jesus, a sign. Jesus, a sign. Let us pray. Father God, I stretch forth my hands to you. Yes, Lord God, I pray now. Yeah, I pray. Lord, there is no other help I know. Lord, 
you would draw your hands from me. God, where shall I go? So, Lord, use me today. Not because I'm good, but because you are. Use me today, Lord. Not because I'm perfect, but because you are. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so um, let's start out with a couple of fun facts. Um, the shepherds were in the region of Bethlehem. We're in the ballpark. Um, and the reason why this is important is because a lot is said about the shepherds and the message they receive, but little has been said about the shepherds and where they come from. But like to emphasize something that's really, really fun. These shepherds weren't ordinary shepherds because their sheep weren't ordinary sheep. As a matter of fact, these shepherds from this specific region are actually the shepherds that prepare the sheep that go to get slaughtered when it comes to the atonement of sin. These specific shepherds are the shepherds that literally bathe, clothe, breathe, give life to make sure that the sheep that they give life to are literally the ones that are without blemish, spot, or fallacy. So, it, man, did I just snore? <laughs> man, that thing hurt too, y'all. That thing hurt. Man. <laughs> Uh, that's the whole sermon. All right, here we go. <laughs> so watch this. So literally, we are dealing with shepherds who are used to the type of sheep that Jesus represents. So let's make this fun again. You ready? We're literally dealing with shepherds who are used to caring for sheep in a unique way to make sure that they are ready, prepared, and perfect for sacrifice. So, so let, let, let's work with it here because Bethlehem is almost the equivalent at this time to an industrial city. So people don't raise their sheep anymore. They buy them. They purchase them. And, 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 and the specific area where these shepherds would have came from are literally the shepherds that would prepare for the Day of Atonement for the feast and for the different moons. So literally these guys have a specific special insight on what it's like to give preference, placement, and preparation for a blemishless lamb that should take away the sins of the world. So notice what happens, and, and, and can we have like a real, real, real fair moment? It's a, it's a regular day. God hasn't spoken through any prophets recently. As a matter of fact, the church has gone too far with this ridiculousness. Uh, I'll tell you, one side of the church is so judgmental and so judicial and so legalistic that people can't even take too many steps on the Sabbath because then it becomes sin because the heart rate got too high and they worked. So you got to understand what that means. That means people intentionally took a shower on Friday and didn't get back into some good clean water until Saturday evening. Y'all playing with me. Uh, they ain't got air conditioning. Okay, let me... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me say this. Um, to my knowledge, there is no deodorant. <laughs> let me say this differently. Uh, they don't have cars with doors that keep dirt from getting on them when they walk. 
Uh, this is why it's so significant when Jesus washes their feet because in the sand, in the dirt, there is no sanitation. So sometimes animals, while they're passing through city streets, they let loose a little bit. And their feet walk in it a little bit. And they ain't got a bath in almost 24 hours. Do you see the issue now? So, so, so watch this. So literally, they funky and won't take a bath because the process that it takes to get water is considered work. And Pharisees and Sadducees are building theologies and a, 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 a thesis, thesis, I'm silly, a thesis to try to protect the Sabbath. And that's why Jesus has to come and say, the Sabbath was made for man, not man being made for the Sabbath. All right. yeah. If you got to work harder to obey it, then did you really have a Sabbath rest? Then there is another group in there, huh? Uh, uh, the people who are what you would consider to some degree almost spiritual, spiritual mothers. Uh, the Samaritans. Uh, these group of people are shunned by the judicials because they weren't born Jews. Hmm? And then all the examples that we have in the Bible other than the good Samaritan, all, all the Samaritans we know of other than that are somehow or another talk bad about or have some bad example attached to them. Give you the woman at the well, huh? The woman who had not one, not two, but five husbands. And so you got one group of people who are super legalistic, political, in bed with the politicians and the money. Another group of people who, you know, God will forgive me, right? The biggest issue is there's no, there's no middle. Huh? There's no, it's no middle. People aren't trying, accepting that we all fail and need mercy and grace but not tie ourselves so tightly to sin. This, this is where the church is at this time. And, and, and watch what happens. So, so Jesus comes at a time where the last group of people are the ones that I think I probably would fit into. Have, have you ever heard about the Maccabean revolt? Okay. There's a group of people in church they kind of got the the rebellious stage, right? And they kind of like, you know, bump everything everybody else talking about. We're going to take it by force, right? Because they believe the part of the Bible where it says flat out, right? Uh, uh, it says an eye for an eye and a two for a two. And so they, they ain't taking nothing laying down with the love of Jesus. You step on their foot, they stepping on yours. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah, see, Brother Shingles, he with me on that. You see what I'm talking about? Brother, Brother Shingles would have been in my group. Yeah, yeah. You, you talk bad about us, we don't talk bad about you, you know. You say something about me, your mama. You know, that's the kind of group we are. You know what I'm saying? You, you ain't going to just get away with nothing and think we're going to get back at you. We got that work. You know what I'm saying? We, we win it. You know what I mean? All right, now watch this. This is how it all fits in. The church is in complete disarray because nobody's in unity together. Amen. Everybody's got an opinion about everybody. And everybody's got a suggestion about everybody. Everybody's got a word about everybody. And everybody's feeling some kind of way about everybody. And everybody's got something to tell. And people are looking at people. And nobody's really living the life that they should live. And nobody's being the example that they should be. And nobody's able to stand like they should stand. And nobody's not even going to stop when they should stop. And nobody's laying down when they should lay down. And nobody's getting up when they should get up. People are moving when they shouldn't. People are going when they shouldn't. And the biggest issue is that Jesus comes when there has not been a word from the Lord for some time. There hasn't been any prophets that are respected. There isn't any standard that has been set. And everybody is in this truth is relative. And your truth is not like my truth. And it's okay to feel the way I feel because if I feel 
different than how you feel. I can't live your life, baby. I got to live my life. And the whole issue is, is that everybody's got an opinion, but nobody is asking God. And so, brother, watch the desperate, my God, watch who the angels come to. They don't go to the pastors working in the city. They go to shepherds preparing the sacrifice yeah. in the field. Yeah. Yeah. So while they're going to the shepherds that are preparing the sacrifice in the field, notice the anxiety and the level of excitement that comes with the good news. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Can I have a moment? Uh, uh, this is the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Amen. Uh, how many of y'all just sit through a good Revelation seminar? Okay, can I get a hand raised real quick? All right. So I thought when I said that there was anxiety about a good news with a good message from some good Adventists talking about an angel coming, I thought about three of y'all would have been excited. All right. Okay, all right. Y'all act like y'all, y'all, all y'all know is the three angels' message. Come on, boy, parents. Look, there's an angel with some good news yeah. about a Christ that is coming to save the people. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right, that, that is... That was, that, okay, I'm going to try it again. Uh, Y'all not making this fun to me. Uh, there is an angel yeah. that is flying from the midst of heaven right. who's got news about the Savior that will share the everlasting gospel yeah. that the people who couldn't get it right for themselves, he's got the tools to make it right without their participation. Uh, man, y'all not making this fun today. Uh, look, in other words, the angel comes so quick that the disciples, I mean, that the shepherds don't even have the ability to time stamp when he came. The Bible just says, suddenly he showed up. Yeah. Yeah. Now, 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 if you don't believe the testimony of how suddenly it was, look at the text so that they can explain to you how great this experience was. See, the word angels, a.k.a. angelos, comes from the concept that angels are nothing more than spiritual beings yeah. that give messages. Yeah. Okay, all right. all right, let me see if I can say that differently. They just give messages. In other words, angels do nothing but say what they've been told to say. Angels only do what they've been told to do. They don't have opinions. They just deliver messages. And here it is. Angels are delivering men for UPS. Oh, come on. Y'all acting brand new. And can I have a moment? I wish some Christians had a UPS ministry. That we would stop trying to give people our opinions and we would just say what the word has to say. That we would stop trying to tell people what we think they should do. And we didn't just say what the word says do. When you get into some tough times, baby, just pray. Uh, when you get into some situations, baby, just get out. I mean, if, do what the word says to do. Amen. Amen. Okay, yeah. See, I knew it. I knew it. Okay, I'm uh, he got to make me run today. All right, here it goes. All right. In other words, <laughs> church, sometimes we are doing too much claiming to be spiritual. Sometimes we are trying to tell the people how to believe what we believe rather than doing what the word of God has to say. Yeah, yeah. And that if we work more under the authority and the office of being an angel, we wouldn't be in some of the situations we in today. Amen. And let me tell you how it gets the pressure off you. When people got a problem with you, you'd be like, well, that's what the word said. Take it up with God. Okay, all right. All right, I know mean, they need to get down. All right, so here it goes. So notice this, the angels come. So notice it says the angel comes suddenly that he doesn't have an ability to time stamp it. But notice what the second part of the Bible says. The Bible literally says that the glory of the Lord was around them. Okay, now you missed it, you missed it. In other words, the Bible is telling us that this joker left the throne of God so fast that by the time he got into the presence of the shepherds, that the presence of God was still on him. Yeah. Yeah. Dang, come on, y'all. 
rock. I, 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 let me say this. Okay, so you know the entire thing, we, we, we got all the commentaries in the Bible. The reason why Satan gets in trouble is because the Bible says the name Lucifer means light bearer. It doesn't mean light creator, which means sometimes Satan got caught up in his feelings about what the presence of God could do. And rather than him realizing it's because he was so close to God, he started to think it was him that was great. Okay, so watch this. That angel that sits at the throne of God left the presence of God so quickly that by the time he got to earth with the message, the glory of God was still on him. Oh man, that thing was fun. I, 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 yeah, that, that blessed me. Alright, watch it, watch it. So watch this. So, so, so the message is so great, important, and dope that the presence of God is still on the angel. And notice this. The joker was moving so fast that the rest of them had to catch up. Alright, alright. Alright, alright. Is anybody, is anybody? You keep reading. The Bible says that the angel said, do not be afraid. And he turns around and says, don't be afraid because I come with good news. Alright. And when I come with good news, notice what happens. By the time he gets done with his sins, Kelsey, all of a sudden the rest of the heavenly host catches up and they say, glory to God in the house. Come on, man. This joker was hustling so fast that the other angels had to catch up just to sell the word. All right, so, okay, that was fun for me. I'll do the rest of my job. All right, so here's what happens. <laughs> then he leaves. They're in the dark again. And then they decide, okay, we should go see what he's talking about. All right. All right, so watch this. Watch this. This is what happens. In the Bible, then he says, and this shall be a sign yes. for you. The sign is when you see the baby wrapped in a cloth laying in a manger. Yes. Okay, I want to say it again. I want to say it again. You ready? You ready? The baby will be wrapped in a cloth laying in a manger. Amen. Say it one more time. This is the way you'll know is that you will go into an entire city. Yeah. You don't know what house it is and you don't know what the people are named. But after you're done with your Google search, <laughs> you will find a baby wrapped in a cloth yeah. laying in a manger. Yeah. And this is the sign that the Savior, the Messiah, yeah. the Christ, the who will take away the sins of the world, is here. All right. Thank you. Okay. Now, 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 this is a lot of fun, right? Because if you look at it, this is a pitiful sign. Okay, let me see if I can say that differently. This is a pitiful sign. Trash. <laughs> Garbage. Because let's discuss it. The problems that we have today seem bigger than a baby wrapped in cloth, laid in some straw, can solve. Okay. Let me turn the corner real quick. A lot of us are dealing with some big problems. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me be, let me rephrase. Yes, we are dealing with some big problems. Yes, yes. We got some issues. Yes, we got some deep-seated, deep-rooted trouble going on today. Yes, 
Amen. And can I be fair Amen. that every now and then when the Lord gives me a word about what is my sign and what is the thing I need to hold on to that things are going to change and turn around. Can I be honest and admit to you that sometimes I need something more complex than a baby that can't hold his head up, can't feed himself, can't clothe himself. God, we got issues today. We can't exactly wait for 30 years for him to get active. And while the plan is developing, notice that the problems don't get better. Let me give you this word right now. You cannot out good bad that you started. I, I know that, that was that was I know that was that was that was a real that was real lofty. Let me break that down. In other words, when you got a situation that is bad, sometimes it's good just to cut it off and go. Okay. All right. I know. I know. I know that was hard to hear. I know that's hard to hear. Um, it was hard for me to hear. It's hard to learn. That sometimes when you are in a bad situation, you can't do good enough in what's wrong to make wrong right. Right. All right. Let me see if I can say it this way. In other words, they couldn't kill sheep forever for the remission of sins. No. Because the only reason why they started killing sheep was to try to make up for the sin that Adam and Eve committed, and the plan was to kill them until the Savior came. But notice this, you got to stop one to begin the other. Yeah, yeah. So watch this. You can't, you can't do good and bad to get good. I know that's like super old school, it ain't really complex, it ain't really dynamic, but please hear this. You cannot do good in a bad situation to make bad good. So watch how this plays into the text. Literally, the shit man. Okay, Lord. Literally, the shepherds have to abandon the sheep that are meant for the atonement of sins and risk the sheep getting blemished that will not be able to take away the sins of the world and be the scapegoat that they need to honor, respect, and exalt the king or the baby that can't even think for itself right now, to be put in the proper place of prophecy to take away the sins forever. Okay, so did you catch that? I'm gonna say it one more time differently. In other words, killing the sheep that goes mad is only going to last until your next sin. And their anointed, specific, appointed job was to protect the sheep from itself. Because what you don't know, sheep are stupid. Like, you ever seen a real sheep? You ever seen a goat? Goats are so dumb, they just fall over randomly. They just, and they just, done. Sheep are just as dumb. Sheep are just as dumb. They, they do the same, same thing. Uh, Tommy Baker has a, a video on Instagram. I gotta watch it. It's where the sheep gets his head caught. It's a barbed wire in the fence, and he can't get out. And then once the guy finally lets him out, the sheep is so scared that he tumbles down this impossible hill full of rocks all the way to the bottom. After he got up there, because he's dumb, sheep are so stupid they can't be trusted to be left alone. So watch this. The dumb sheep have to be risked 
to be blemished, kill themselves, and stolen so that they can give homage to the only sheep that will take away the sins of the world forever. Amen. You sometimes got to stop wrong after it's already gone too far. All right. To begin a path of good that will prosper. Hallelujah. That was my brief commercial that I felt like the Lord really needed just to get through on there. Don't keep up wrong trying to make it right because you feel guilty about what you've done. Okay? All right. So watch this. I got to try to get with something. So now they go, they find the baby. And when they find the baby, you got to understand how difficult this was. Everybody was in town for the census. So they didn't just walk into the right house. Because remember, this is not like the story like the wise men. They don't have a star sitting over top of the location. They didn't have that same perspective. Luke doesn't even give it as an option. So their experience of finding Jesus is different than the wise men who hear and just go and locate. In other words, let me give you this option. I'm give you this word that will bless your soul. The right path won't always show up immediately. My God, when you've been doing things that are wrong for so long, look, I'm abandoning all my nerves. When you do things that are wrong for so long and you try to get right, it's going to take some persistence, some patience, yeah. and some perseverance yeah. until yeah. you find a way to get out. Yeah. No, let me say that again. Because Satan will try to discourage you with your failures to get it right yeah. instead of just letting you get it right the first time. In yeah. other words, if you are trying to get out of debt and you finally make a financial plan, Satan will bring up things to cause more money yeah. than money yeah. That's right. That's right. to flow out of your pocket. He will cause you to be in a situation where no matter how much you pay, and no matter how much you sacrifice, no matter how hard you work, uh, if you are trying to get a godly relationship, Satan will send some good looking people your way that ain't got no good intentions. That's right. Amen. 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 Do y'all hear me? And five will show up. And five, five will show up. And drop that gorgeous will come by. And you are sitting there like, Lord, this is going to be my checklist, but Lord, 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 it's still be my eyelids. Y'all, y'all, y'all going to act down there. That ain't y'all's testimony. Okay, I'm going to say it this way. Oh, when you need a new job, job opportunities will come that will be just as bad as the one you currently got. But you got to be persistent and patient to hold on to that thing until the Lord says, this is the one. And he gives you a sign to prove it. So they got to go from house to house to house and realize everybody's in town because everybody's here for the census. Yeah. It doesn't say how many houses. It doesn't say if they went to multiple. It says, and when they found him, they told everybody all that was in the place what they heard. And when they told everybody in the place what they heard, notice what happens in the Bible. It then says, all of a sudden, everybody was in wonder of what happened. The Bible says, Mary treasured it in a heart. Text says after that, then soon thereafter. Soon thereafter. Soon thereafter they left. It says they left and they went praising and glorifying God. Till they got back to where they came from. Here it goes, y'all. It's, it's, it's three simple points. Why this sign? Understand what I mean. This sign 
does not necessarily offer immediate change. Okay. I'm going to say this out loud. Sometimes the worthy road is the hard road. Yes, yes. Sometimes the worthy road is the hard road. Rephrase. Sometimes the worthy road is the hardest road to travel. Right. Yes. That's right. That's what's it's not just hard. It is the hardest. <laughs> when you got troubles with people, sometimes it's easier just to avoid them until they leave. When you got drama, sometimes it feels easier just to sweep it under the rug than confront it. When you got real issues, sometimes it's, ignorance can be blissful. In other words, being ignorant or, or, or non-aware or non-acknowledging of a situation can really give you a happy life. Uh, Phrase is said this way, what they don't know won't hurt them. But let me, yes ma'am, let me tell you this. The devil is alive. Not addressing some things don't make it easier. In the long run, it makes it hard. Yeah, man. Have mercy, Jesus. Have mercy. Caring enough about somebody to tell them that they're wrong and knowing that you may lose a good friend or a family member is hard. Yes. Yes. Especially when you feel like you sin on them in the first place. You ain't got enough to go around. Notice this. Here's the second part about this. Going Doing the right thing can be so hard. Second part about it is doing the right thing doesn't gratify you immediately. Notice this, even after they found Jesus, Jesus doesn't get active in his ministry until he's 30. Amen. So though they found him, watch this, watch this, watch Though they found him, it didn't mean immediate change. <clears throat> okay, let me give you something easy. Though you went to the gym, it doesn't mean you lose a weight today. <laughs> right? Though you created a budget, it doesn't mean you're going to be a millionaire tomorrow. She may be lucky to get $2 tomorrow. Watch this, watch this, watch this. So literally, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this calmly because I want us do not grow weary in well doing. For in due season, yes. you shall reap a harvest. Yeah, thank you. And the hardest part of this Christian experience is knowing that there's a due season but being stuck in fall. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Do you hear me? Because so many times you will see spring summer, fall, winter, spring, summer, fall, winter. And you'll get to a place that you're asking, Lord, where is this fifth season called due season? All right. And you will be tied up. And, I'm, and look, I'm telling you from experience, you will be tied up looking for due season and we usually lose our battle in the other seasons not waiting for due season. That's where most of us get lost. Most of us would have never found Jesus and we would have called that angel and God a liar. Okay. I'm going to have to say that differently. Or maybe I hit a bang or a nerve. Most of us get weary in the search and we find ourselves not making it to the promise. 
Think about it. The children of Israel for 40 years lost people in the search. Not because they didn't have a word, but because they didn't hold on to the end. And I'm not saying this to beat you up. I'm saying this to encourage you. That the Lord literally doesn't want you to give up. No. Because his sign is waiting on you to find. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you for your patience, Christ Jesus. So watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. So so the disciples, they get up here, Lord, the shepherds, they get there, they're disciples too, but the shepherds get there to find him. And notice what happens. When they find him, notice the three things. So I asked the question, you know, why a sign? And here's the reason. The first reason is why a sign is because some of us need to learn how to go. Notice what the Bible says. The Bible says after the angel leaves, they say, we must go yes, to see right. what is happening. In other words, the Lord is, for those of us who can't apply this appropriately, you have been waiting on an answer from God about what to do. And the answer from the Lord today is go. Amen. Yeah, okay. That is not a blessing. Uh, let me say it again. We got to go. We got to stop waiting on everybody else to do it, somebody else to do it. Here's the word for you today. You do it. We got to get up and go. Uh, because man, we got to get up and go. Now, I, I don't know what go is for you, but we got to get up and go. The second thing the sign will do for you is the sign will cause you to have a testimony. Right. Let me say it again. The sign will cause you to testify. Uh, now, I don't know about you, uh, uh, but how many of us have been down on our last time? Okay. And didn't the Lord make a way? Okay. How many of us been on our last box of food? And didn't the Lord make a way? Shoot, how many of us were sitting in the negative on some bank accounts? And didn't the Lord make a way? Uh, how many of us were sitting in some deep and ugly, dark situations? And did the Lord make a way? And let me tell you this, what will happen. Pressure sometimes builds up so great that you ain't sure how it's going to work out. And then when it works out, you ain't got, you know what you got to do? Tell somebody. Let me, let me tell you this. Man, sometimes I can't help but tell somebody. And I know sometimes it may not be significant to you. I know it may not always bless you. But every now and then, when you spend some good time being faithful to the Lord and being stuck in some situations, every now and then you just can't help but tell somebody. I mean, I just feel like I can't keep my mouth closed sometimes. God has been so good to me about the things he's brought me over and the trials that he's brought me through and the situations I walked out and walked into and I was in trouble. I was guilty, but God still protected me and God still trusted me that sometimes I can't even tell you about what he did. I can only say the Lord is good all the time and all the time the Lord is do you feel me up in here? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yes, yeah. sir. So, not only will your testimony be a blessing unto you, because every now and then, have you ever repeated your testimony and thought to yourself, man, that's just crazy? Like, it shouldn't have worked out that way. I shouldn't be where I am today, but because the Lord showed up, it just had me a chance to reflect on that thing and be like, man, he better than I thought he was. He could do more than I thought he could do. He could bless me in ways I thought. Like, God is good to me. And notice what happens. Your testimony will be so strong that it will cause other people to wonder about God. That's right. It's right here in the text. The Bible says that the shepherds told them all that would have happened, and it caused everybody who heard it in the house to wonder. Yes. All right, all right. So last but not least, the Bible says not only did they wonder, then it said that the spirit of the Lord was so good to them and how much it caught them off guard. What they saw was so amazing, 
about what was going on and what they heard was so unbelievable. The Bible says they walked away praising God and glorifying him still. Okay, all right. This is where it gets fun. Right. In other words, the Bible's letting us know that sometimes God is so good that you just become obnoxious with how excited you are about what he's done, that even when ain't nobody around, you're still happy all by yourself. You're in the mirror just a grinning. You, you, in the cut. you can't even put your makeup on good because you got creases in your cheeks and you're still smiling. You can't even be able to drive your car straight in the line because you're just so happy. Your eyes is cheeky because you just sat, you just, it, just, it just does something that even when the message has been fulfilled and the prophecy has been lived and the promise has been made that after all they've been through, they're still excited. All right. Yeah. 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 Ain't got an audience just by themselves. Still excited. And watch this. So, 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 This is why it's so important to have a sign. Notice what happens. The Bible says that they shall see a child in clothes, wrapped in cloth, laying in a manger. They also saw angels and a heavenly host and a multitude with them. And they heard a word from him because of how amazing the situation was. Okay, so here it is. I want you guys to know today that if you rely on one thing, that one thing will abandon you. Okay, so so let me let me have a super transparent moment. Um, uh, I'm going to therapy. Okay, because we all need mental maintenance. Can, can we be fair? We go to the gym to work out because we got a bad report from the doctor. And so we're hoping that if we ch change our A1C, lower our heart, our blood pressure, we feel we lose a couple of pounds to get the weight off our joints, that our bodies will be better. So we do physical exercise or change physical habits to have an internal change. Okay, let me say that again. In other words, we need to do the same thing with our minds that we do with our bodies. Right. Yes, yes. We don't all have healthy practices with getting rid of life stresses. Amen. Amen. Oh man, that was quiet. Okay, let me, let me come down your lane real quick. That's why some of us cry with no end. And that's why some of us are angry for no reason. And that's why some of us are alcoholics but we won't tell nobody in the church. That's why some of us still smoke weed. I'm sorry, CBD oil. <laughs> hmm? Some of us got some of that sitting right in our air purifier at home right now. We're hoping to just fumigate to my house. <laughs> because though it's medicinal use in its proper context, we have over abused it and used it as a substitute for the mental bodies that we are struggling with. It's okay to cry. It's okay to use natural things from the earth to give you relief. But by no means is it daily consumption to be a placebo for avoiding your issues. So the pastor's going to therapy. And one of the things that my therapist said to me, and I want to depart this to you, okay? I naturally am a person that feels stuff. I'm sensitive. Uh, people call me other day. When I was growing up, they called me a sissy. <laughs> because for random reasons, I just feel bad. Could be because I'm open and receptive to the spiritual world and I feel presences around me. Amen. And that I'm so sensitive to it that I'm aware, but I've been ignoring it because it's not masculine, it's not a man, it's not newish. Feeling sensitive. So here's the thing. Sometimes when I'm at home writing my sermons, I feel bad. And therefore, because I feel bad, I feel like this is the wrong sermon to preach. Right? I'm just having a transparent moment with you. 
and my feelings normally drive my decisions. Okay, men in arguments with their wives will call them emotional. Yeah. I'm an emotional man. So something that the Bible is telling me, but something that my therapist and the word is telling me is that we oftentimes have to incorporate our other senses yeah. to make an informed, conscious decision. So watch this. Let me say it this way. You ready? In other words, you can't taste all situations. No. Because that's just awkward. No. You can't smell all situations. Because that's just weird. If you smell the people, that's just, that's just strange. <laughs> but you know what you can do? You can see it. You can hear it. Right. And you can feel it. To allow one of your situations to drive you without examining and incorporating the other ones that can be accessed right. means that you're getting one-fifth of an understanding. Can you give me that? Check this. One fifth of an understanding. So oftentimes we have to stop and allow the other two things that are existing to be what helps us to make a pure analyzing understanding situation. I mean, analyze. Okay. A pure informed decision on what's happening in our circumstance. Right. Can I can I can I can I have a moment? Yeah. Okay, I know this is gonna get me in trouble and I'm done, I promise. Right, go and ahead. Be like, go ahead. One more sentence, I'm done. Alright, watch this. So watch this. If something makes you feel bad, you have to look at the situation and analyze it. You have to say, what am I hearing in the situation? Because one thing isn't enough to help you make a good decision. Right. Sometimes the Bible says that this way. We have to walk by faith and not by faith. So sometimes you got to rely on what you heard and, yeah. and what you're feeling and not all the time by what you're seeing. That's right. That's right. Amen. Okay. That's right. Let me say it differently. In other words, you can't always feel everything because, because sometimes things ain't always how they seem. Amen. 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 And every now and then, we got to analyze everything fully to have a full decision. Watch this. The Bible is letting us know that the Lord intentionally used multiple sensory detail to make it stick about what God is saying and doing in us. In your life. Yeah. Thank you, Christ. So this is my close. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God is giving you a son. Some of us ain't seen it yet. God has given us a sign. The truth is, we gave up looking for it. Give us strength. Some of us got a sign. Give us strength, right? And watch this, Scott. We couldn't wait 30 years for it to be fulfilled. It's understanding. God gave some of us a sign, y'all. And I'm telling you right now, we either gave up looking for it, or we didn't trust him long enough to wait for it. Yeah. That Notice this. The angels are in a rush. The shepherds are in a rush. Mary and Joseph are trying to find a spot. But notice this. The baby doesn't rush to grow up. No. God is never in a rush. The only rush God has is when he's coming to get his people. All right, all right. Other than that, he's never in a rush. Woman, no, baby is dying at daddy's home. Woman touches his him, he stops. To see who touched him. Yeah. Not in a rush. People can't wait for him to die on Friday night. He takes his time to count his cross. Notice the disciples are panicking.
Because we're taking the water and the boat's going down. Sleeping in the bottom of the sea. Right, right. Man. Another situation we have to see again. And Lord knows this time, looking back as bad as last time. Here he comes walking, not even jogging across the sea. God is not restricted by time. No, he is not. Nor is he restricted by making a difference in your life. No, he is not. Why be so anxious? God's on it. And he's not. Patience is a virtue. And it's the hardest lesson for a Christian to learn. When you've made all the changes to receive the fruit that the Lord has promised you, and yet the change is not here. Now, some of us are stuck you we ain't all for the change. Okay, that was that was We ain't all for the change. Still some changes that need to be made. But even if we were, we still have to wait on the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's still some things he's waiting to do. So here it is, I'm done. This Christmas that we celebrate, that should be in July. I want to encourage you to know that the sign still took 30 years Amen. to even show up. Yeah. And then took another three and a half years to do what he came to do. That's right. All right. God sees your change. God sees your openness. God sees your heart. Thank you, Jesus. But ladies and gentlemen, don't grow weary in the doing. For in due season, you shall reap a harvest. Yeah. If you faint not. This Christmas, I tell you, I know we done spent, some of us spent some money. Some of us you know, we got our IOU you list. I'll oh, shoot some of us at it. Some of us appear as if we won't do it at all. One thing you should do, hold on to your sign. Because notice the sign is really just Jesus showing up to make a difference just for you. Because after the sign shows up, the disciples have a release of power. After the sign shows up, you can be forgiven like this. After the sign shows up, bodies get healed. After the sign shows up, deliverance is wrought. After the sign shows up, we shall ride upon the high places of the earth. After the sign shows up, families are brought back together. After the sign shows up, spirits are brought out of hell. And after the sign shows up, grave and cemeteries look like plowed fields. Yeah, but it's only after the sign shows up. Thank you, Christ Jesus. Hold on to your sign. Yeah. Hold on to your sign. Hold on to your sign. Hold on to Jesus. And I promise you, he's on the way. He may not come when you want him, but I promise you he'll be there right on time. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your word. God, it wasn't conventional, but neither you. For Lord, you come when you want to, when you do how you feel like it. So Lord, I'm asking right now, God, not that we would be in this animosity, this upset, this distraught place, God, because 
you, you took too long or you didn't see what we were going through. You didn't know how bad it was. God, for you see and know everything, Lord. So I know you see me, God, and I know you know all the details about what I'm going through, God. I know you see the person that lied to me, God. And I know you see the person that thought they was ready but wasn't, God. I know you see the job, Lord, that I thought was perfect, God, but it wasn't, Lord. I know you saw me leap, Lord, and it feels like I'm falling, God, and I'm just waiting to smack the ground, but God, I believe that you will hide me under yeah. your wings where I can abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. Yeah. I believe, Lord, that you have called for me to be able to trust in you and wait on you in such a special way that, God, it will make a difference in my life, God. Not because I was faithful, but God, because you were faithful, God. Not because I took a leap of death, but God, because you died on the cross. And, Lord, I believe Thank you, God. That I know how difficult it is. God, I know and I believe how strange this looks. God, I know and I believe that you see it all. And that you hear it all. So God, I'm asking today that you allow for us to make a three-fold at least four decisions. And hold on to you in such a way that we get the promise that has been prophesied to us. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for my family and this church. Thank you, Thank Lord, you, Christ, Jesus. for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And thank you, God. For everything that you've done for Thank us. Thank you, Father God, how great I am. Jehovah. Thank you for coming. Thank you for showing up. Yeah. And thank you for returning. Yeah. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.